I've recently been on the road and away from my workshop and in this video I was heading down to Melbourne. I was extremely honoured to be invited by Master Smith Sean McIntyre to his workshop for a folding knife course. It's an awesome workshop and what a place to spend the next week along with other makers learning new skills. I'll introduce Sean here by showing him at work with a couple of action shots showing a little of what he does. And here's an example of one of his stunning pieces of work which is just about perfection and shows how lucky I am to be here and to be gaining some of his knowledge. I feel a little intimidated by all the talent that's here this week as also invited is Jackson Rumble whose knives are incredible pieces of art including this Bowie knife that he just won best of show for in this year's Sydney Knife Show. And to finish the group we have Corin who many of you already know and he makes beautiful barrel knives. Anyway, let's get started on making our folding knives. Sean has already roughly cut our pieces to get us going. We'll start with our blades and first we'll drill the pivot hole and then we'll use a template to scribe the actual blade shape onto it and then carefully grind down close to the lines. I haven't filmed the whole process of me making my knife but I have filmed each step of at least one of our knives to document the full build. We also use the bandsaw to cut in a notch which is for the sharpening choil. The blade will get heat treated and hardened and that's why we're working on those now as we can work on the next stage while they're tempering in the oven. The spring that will hold the blade in position also needs heat treating so we're working on those as well. They're pretty straightforward and I should mention that the steel for the blade and the spring is 52100. I have no idea what this is about, but I'm just glad that it's clearly labelled. The last thing to do before heat treating is to cut a nail nick into the blade. We'll do that on the miller machine using a custom made fly cutter and we'll feed that in very slowly. That's all of our parts ready for hardening and even though you probably can't see we've lightly marked them with a centre punch to work out who's is who's. Sean also made a couple of spares just in case. We're using a PID control vertical forge for the heat treating and this keeps the forge at a desired temperature. I love the setup and thinking about doing the same with my forge. We gave them a quick clean then put them in the oven to temper and then we heat treated the springs in the same way. While the blades and springs got several tempering cycles we started working on our liners. We each had two liners and they'll sandwich the blade and the spring. They're made from 410 stainless steel. Also Sean has glued the pairs of liners together so whatever we do to one we do to the other. That's drilled and roughly shaped out, staying a little away from the lines. Now we're back on the blades and the springs. The first thing we do is take out any slight bend. We do that with a carbide hammer. And even though the blade is hardened, a series of light hits will stretch the steel on one side and take out any bend. I was amazed at how well this worked, even though any bend in any of the knives was very, very tiny. Now we've got them straight, we can put them on the magnetic chuck of the surface grinder and grind them down super flat. This is a machine that I've never used before, but I've wanted one for some time. It took a fair while to grind both sides, but I enjoyed it and it does an awesome job. I did mine and Corrin's together at the same time and then Jackson did his afterwards. Just trying to get the rhythm, hey. And at this point, Sean put his knife aside to concentrate more on helping us with ours. Next we drilled out the pivot hole in the blade to its final size using a solid carbide drill bit. 
Sean has already made the bronze bushing for the pivot and even after drilling out the pivot hole it was still a little too tight so we enlarged it with this tool that I haven't used before which is a barrel one. And you gotta run it all the way through because it's barrel shaped, yeah? yeah? So if you don't go in far enough, you're making a tapered hole. You could have seen that, you'd be utterly wrong. That's just about perfect, and next we demagnetized all the pieces. We did that ready for timing, which is adjusting the pieces so that the knife will open and close accurately. So this is a ripple jig and what we're doing here is we're, we're using it to indicate the timing on the thing. So we need to know where we're at in all three positions, right? So we're at the half stop position now, it's at zero. I'll go to the open position and I'm 0.05 over, which is a very small amount. This is just a, a crude pattern, but that would indicate that we need to take 0.5 of a mil off of this corner right here to drop that down to zero. Back in the closed position, we're at 0.01. Essentially, we're almost at zero. So we're, ex we're, we're right in all three positions, except open is just slightly over. This is my starting point, and even though I didn't show it all, I went between the grinder and the Rupal jig, taking small amounts off and checking it until I was just about there. When we did get them close, we ground the back of the knife, blending the spring, the liners, and the back of the blade together. I believe that the timing isn't essential, the blade will open fine without it, but what the timing does is ensure that the spring is flush with the back of the liners in the open half stop and close positions and this will elevate the quality of the knife to another level. These are the type of things that I'm learning this week and hopefully I can apply them to my own projects and get them to an even higher level. After grinding the back on the disc sander we finished on a horizontal belt to put any abrasive lines along the knife which will make things easier when we come to finish. We also finished the inside of the spring now also on a horizontal belt. Next we go back to the Rupal jig, put in the spring under tension while we make any adjustments. We check the mechanism works as intended and then we have a position to drill a hole through the liners using the centre hole of the spring as a guide. I didn't get much footage of this process which I was pretty disappointed about but I did get footage of Sean's Dammit doll which I thought was appropriate right now. There are so many processes to this project and I was rushing to film everything but if it's something you'd like to see, I may make another and film it at my usual pace with more detail. The two liners can now be separated by heating up the glue. Now that we have the timing and the final pin position drilled, everything will go back together perfectly. Next we mark the position of the springs onto the liners, ready for the following step, and that's milling a relief into the liner around the pivot point, and the marks will tell us where to start and stop the cut. We're doing this using a rotary table, but you could easily make a jig that pivots and does the same thing. The relief is to give the blade clearance around the pivot and avoid it from getting scratched. Now we'll move on to the handle scales and me and Corinne are both using this stabilised timber. I've never heard of it before but apparently it gets its name from when it's freshly cut as it smells like raspberry jam. And Jackson has decided for his scales he's going to use maroon micarta. We're flattening one side of them now and then we left them overnight and checked that they hadn't bowed or moved in any way. We then milled the opposite side to get them parallel. I reckon the figure there is looking stunning. We'll put the scales aside and start on the bolsters which were made from 416 stainless steel.
Jackson flatten one side of all of our bolsters and that's to get them ready to solder onto the outside of the liners. But first we'll glue them together so we can grind one edge square and that's for the scales to butt up to as that will be difficult to do once it's been soldered. I didn't get a shot of that but we also drilled a hole for the pivot pin. We apply flux to the liner and the bolster and then place flattened solder between them. We're using slow temperature solder and we gently heated it until the solder flowed. It certainly did have an effect on my uh, decision making process. Still not down at this side over here. Move your heat. Yeah, That's there you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, and keep going. We then trimmed off the waste and ground down the bolster close to the liner. We put the liners with their bolsters aside and began grinding the bevels onto the blade and we did that using simple jigs that we made for the process. We made them adjustable with a screw at the back to gradually change the angle of the bevel as we're grinding. Once the bevels were ground in, we ground a swedge or a swage, however you want to say it, into the spine of the blade. And now it was time for all of us to start hand sanding. Here's a test fit up of my knife held with dummy pins. Next we cleaned up the bolsters flush with the liner and then we drilled one more pin hole in the liner which will be to help secure the scales on. We're almost ready to glue the scales on but first we flattened the inside faces to be glued one last time and then we sanded the front edges that get fitted against the bolster. I was surprised about this, but I was assured that CA glue is a legitimate way of fixing the scales to the liners. Yep. Hard up against the face, push back. Can you feel it? Yep, I feel it, that's it. Yep. Uh -huh. yep that's it. Be on no, be on Next, we drilled pinholes through the scales from the back and then trimmed off the excess. Here we're reducing the height of the bronze bushing using this cool little jig. We just sand the bushing by putting light pressure on it and the jig keeps it square. And we've already lost a half a thou. So we're 20, we're 10, we've done 10% of the work. We keep checking it and stop when it's one thou over the thickness of the blade. Now we've put the knife back together using dummy pins again and we'll start to shape the scales. Once all the edges were done to a high grit, and I think that was 600, we started to taper the handle, making it narrower at the bolster. Okay. 
Next we ground a small bevel onto the front of the bolster and then started rounding and final shaping the scales. Sean is showing me what to do here while I'm filming but then I did do it myself. I reckon that looks fantastic. Next we prepare the pins for fixing the scales onto the liner and we did that by forming a head on one end of the pin and we did that with this carbide tool in the drill press. Things were happening very fast at this point and it was difficult to keep up with the camera. Anyway, the pins go in from the inside and they sit into a countersink that we've put onto the holes in the liner and now they're ready to pin and lock the scales on permanently. All of the pieces are just about ready to assemble. I just need to taper the pinhole in the bolster so when the pin gets pinned, it'll never come back apart. The last pin which puts tension on the spring has a point on it and when that goes in the point will find the hole in the spring and it will push it into position as it goes through. If it was just a regular pin it would be difficult to get the spring tension just right to line up the holes. Now I'm trimming down the pins and then I'll grind them to just the right length. I've forgotten what this tool's called, but I'm using it to put a chamfer on the end of the pins. It needs lots of light taps to gradually pin the pin and fill the tapered hole, so when it's ground back there'll be no gaps and the pin will disappear into the bolster. Next I need to grind the pins flush, but as I want to avoid getting dust and grit inside the knife, I'm packing it out with tissue. When the pins were flushed down, it was just a case of any final touches, a bit of hand sanding here and there, and then hitting the handle scales on the buffing wheel. And the very last thing to do is sharpen them, and we did that using paper wheels. And that's it, they're all done and I reckon they look incredible. I absolutely love Sean's design and I'm super keen to make another. I love the craftsmanship that was involved but I also really enjoyed the mechanism with the timing and getting the spring to be flush in all three positions. The video is a little fast paced in places where I could have done with a bit more footage and I didn't mention the whole thing was shot on my phone but hopefully you still enjoyed it. A big thanks to all the guys for a very special week especially Sean for sharing his workshop, his knowledge and time and for being a great host and thanks for letting me produce this wonderful knife and thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next one.